Welcome back to All Things with Ala. We are in my kitchen. We're doing home bake macarons. So I did post a video. I'll link it on the bottom of macarons from the tea room. So commercial kitchen macarons. But today I'm doing a video from home, home-based macarons. Uh, home kitchen, I should say, home kitchen macarons. If you are new, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you guys are here. If you have not subscribed, please do so so you don't miss any of the videos. It's all things with Ala, so who knows what the next video is going to be about. It could be traveling, it could be coffee, it could be organizing, it could be my experience with owning a Tesla. Who knows? But today, it's macarons. I will do a lot of macaron videos, tutorials, just cute things like that on how to do different characters and stuff like that um, in the future. But today it's just the basic macaron itself. So let's get started. Jumping right in so we don't waste too much time. Okay, so I did tweak this recipe to a smaller portion. And bear with me here. I'm not, I haven't baked macarons in home in like seven years. All right. Grams, put our bowl on our scale. If you guys can see me here, try to rearrange stuff so that it's more visible for you guys. Okay. You got my, I have my sugar. Egg whites, room temperature, at least four hours. Okay, egg whites. We're doing 143. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Perfect. Don't want that to drip. And then sugar, 143 as well. So we're gonna press tear on your scale and then add your sugar a little at a time. You don't wanna go over. You can totally weigh out your ingredients. I have a weird little bead in there, okay. Weigh out your ingredients before you put it all in. Totally fine, but for time purposes, I'm just going to do this. So 143. Now at the tea room when we made it, I beat my eggs, my egg whites and sugar for five minutes. At home, I don't know because I made the recipe smaller. So I actually just divided the recipe in half. Okay, no whisk. I will time it. One ninety grams of powder sugar. I want to make sure this is powder sugar and not flour. It's powdered sugar. I've done that before. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Those days. Okay, so 190. And then 190. 190. Powder sugar, 190, almond flour. Oh, that was perfect. No, you don't want to be perfect? It like went away. That was so weird. I'm gonna move it so you guys can see. Okay. We're done with that. Thank you. 
And it's all right if you dump the rest of this in. It's no big deal. Like, it's not the end of the world. It all mixes in just fine. Unless your almond flour has, like, really big chunks of, I don't even know. This one, I always mix it in. I'm going to wait so it looks like it's going to be four minutes. I'm going to do it exactly at four minutes so it's easier to time. Four minutes. So your egg whites and sugar mix for four minutes. Nice and stiff. Oh yeah, I know. I tap it and people say, don't tap it. None of that is true. It's all a myth. At least for my recipe. I will say that. Okay, so we are going to put our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients. And then we are folding it in. So how I mix it is like this. This is how I start when I start to combine it. This is so loud. Trying to time it how long I'm mixing it for. Still doing this whole method here, but of a better angle for you to see how I mix it. But you're scraping the sides, incorporating it all every now and then. I only do it about once, sometimes twice, depends on how much of batter I have. I will scrape everything off my spatula so that if there's any dry ingredients on the spatula, all that gets incorporated as well. Okay, so then now we're going to do that whole press in method. We're just pressing the dough in to the sides of our bowl. You get a workout, that's for sure but they're so worth it. If I were to do separate flavors and I need different colors, this is kind of the stage where I would divide it into different bowls and then mix my colors in. Um, but if you're doing just white, then keep going for about a minute more. Okay, four minutes. It's the same thing. So four minutes you mix it on your um, mixing bowl with your mixing bowl and then four minutes by hand. Obviously, if you're a super slow mixer, it's going to take you longer. 
I'm trying to see what's the best way for me to describe it. It's kind of glossy, so it's all mixed in. And it's dripping off. Not You don't want to overmix it where it's completely like you lift it and it all comes off. That's overmixed. You want it where I pick it up and it drips off. That's what we're looking for. So this is mixed perfect. This is it, I'm not going anymore. So you see how it's just dripping off? That's what you guys want. You don't want it to completely right away come off your spatula when you're lifting it. You just want it to slowly drip off. Like it's slow. We like that. Wilton 2A is the tip that I'm gonna be using. I like this tip a lot. It makes them really nice size. You're not getting like a hard workout squeezing really hard this makes it much easier in my personal opinion to maintain and to squeeze and to pipe out okay we got our bag fitted over whatever container you guys can find that fits your bag that is good and then we're just gonna put all of our batter into our bag I'm doing white, should have separated it, but I'll do also pistachio, but this is gonna be actually creme brulee. That's a really popular flavor that we did. And I found a really cute, easy technique to get that creme brulee on top without burning your macarons or your fingers. Okay, so all this is gonna go in here. Again, when you're adding coloring to it, just separate the batter unless you want it for each color. Um, if I'm making like a big batch of color, I will add the coloring to my egg whites before I combine. You can do either or. You can add the egg, the egg coloring, egg coloring. You can add the coloring to the batter as you're mixing or to your egg whites. I am going to do this at a on a damp cloth because when I'm going to be pounding, it's going to be very loud. We don't want that. And my damp cloth is a little dirty. We'll fold that in. Just checking. Okay, might not do that. Hmm. I wonder if I do it over another mat, if that's gonna help. Yes, I like that. So the damp cloth, actually the cloth, the towel, the rag, whatever, um, gave it too much of a cushion and I didn't think, I don't think they're gonna do what they need to do. It's just, it's too much of a cushion. This, this feels good. Okay, so we are going to pipe. Okay, so we're squeezing right there. We're letting it drop and then gently pressure and let go and like that. So letting it drop, gently pressure, let go, twist. You're not touching with your tip, your mat. You're squeezing your batter and letting it fall onto your mat. You're keeping it straight. Just like that. Don't worry about that. When we're going to pound them, that will all clear out. So like this, we stop, we turn. Go, 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 stop, turn. The more you do this, the easier it'll get. 
I really like this tip because I feel like it's bigger, so it just drops out as a perfect circle right away, so you don't have to worry about when you're squeezing it and how it's coming out. Okay, we're gonna gently tap. So one, two, three, four, five. Loud noise. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Turn again. One, two, three, four, five. And then turn again. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Five on each side. And then on to the next one. And I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put it. Wait. So I wanted to show you guys some unicorns. Those are a big popular one. It's pretty simple to make. So we're just going to drop in the middle like our normal one. And then we're just going to gently pull out the top and then you have your little ears on the side. So again, don't have it too close. And then you have your top and then your ears. And I forgot to bring sprinkles from work. Mm. Okay, so we'll have to make do with what we have. And when you have like a little funky ear, you just go back in there and fix it. So again, we're dropping that, and then we're just gonna do a little horn and then the ears. And then for the back, I just do a regular macaron. So we have one, two, three, four. So we're just gonna have four regular macarons. Now this, as you can tell, is the end of my batter. It is very important when you guys are towards the end that it's not necessary to pound your macarons super hard. I actually do about three on each side instead of the normal four. If you don't have one, get it. The dollar store has these scrapers. Everybody has them. Don't use the metal. It's going to cut your bag. And these bags are totally reusable. Rewash hot water with a little bit of soap. Rinse out hot water. And I use these bags probably five, six times. Just be gentle when you guys are lifting and moving your sheets. Okay, so same thing. I don't pipe them as big because they will spread more when you're at the end of your batter. Okie dokie. Just add, I have like a little bit, but not enough for a whole one. And every little bit gets squeezed out. So gently I'm going to pick it up, put this back and then tap one, two, three. Up. One, two, three. One, Normally, I'll put some sprinkles right here, but like I said, I forgot them, so that's not going to work, but here I will figure that out, but before I even attempt to find some sprinkles in my house, here is a very important, very important thing about drying macarons. Ta-da! Get yourself a fan. This fan we used at work, we had it um, at the tea room. We had it at the tea room. I would recommend nothing less besides this. If you ignore every little tip I tell you, please don't ignore this. Get yourself a fan and fan dry your macarons. I'm gonna time it exactly how long they're gonna dry for. I'm gonna put them out right here next to my fan and get it going.
This one I got at Costco probably six years ago. It was right when we opened. So it was one of those things where I know that we needed and I had to get it. Do you have to have such a big one? No. Kind of depends on what you guys do, how many macarons you're baking and stuff. So I'm going to put it on, making sure the fan's going and that it's blowing where it needs to blow. My only issue is that this chair is too high. So I have to figure out a box or something. <laughs> okay. We make do. Okay. You don't want it too close. I'm going to move it a little bit more so it's kind of towards the center of my macarons here. So they're all getting dried. There we go. So I can feel the air and that's what you guys want. And again, I'm going to time it. How long they dry, how long they dry for with the fan. I would say if the fan takes 10 minutes, it would take you 30 minutes. I'm not exaggerating. This is the biggest issue people have. They don't dry enough their macarons. And I know they're saying there's recipes out there where you don't have to dry and all that stuff. None of that worked for me. I tried those recipes because it would be such a time savior. It was always an issue where some of them would crack, some of them would be okay. There was no, there was just no consistency. And for me, that doesn't work. Um, I needed my macarons to have good consistency, not like some are good, some are bad. Some, even some bakes are good and some are bad. That just doesn't work. This works great. Highly recommend it. You can even get a small little table one. I grabbed it from work because it's what I had, but you could get a small little table one, put it on and fan dry your macarons. Okay, they're going to dry. I'm going to time it and we'll go from there. Okay, so I have this fan and I absolutely love it because it swivels. So I was kind of like letting them dry, but because they're set out this way, they're not, this part's not drying and that part's not drying. So what I'm going to do is going to get, press my little swivel. On my fan. So that's the nice part about this fan that it does that. Is stand over it and is it blowing air? And if it is, then it's drying it. So that's what you want. I'm going to do another batch while this is drying. Not dry yet. Nope, nope, nope. Even though I'm touching them and my finger is dry, but they're not. They're just, they're too soft. You want to have that has to have that nice thick layer on top. That's how you prevent cracking. So take your time. I do nor normally I do multiple batches. So that's where I don't even pay attention to the time or I'll do dishes or there's always something to do. Make creams, anything. I'm going to do another batch, but I'm doing the full batch that we did at the tea room and I'm going to divide it in half. So I want to show you guys that. Full batch here and then I'm gonna divide it so I'll show you guys at least that part and you can do like multiple colors oh sorry multiple flavors I I said this in my commercial one and if I missed it somehow um, I'll say it again I never add flavoring unless it's chocolate 
I guess I should do chocolate. I never add flavoring into my macarons unless it's chocolate. So I add cocoa powder, but otherwise, no, it's only coloring. Chocolate and red velvet. Take it back. Chocolate and red velvet. Um, coffee. We just do a little bit of instant coffee. That's it. But everything else is just coloring. I always concentrate on my filling and you have the macaron do its own thing. I think if you start adding stuff to your macaron, it's just too much and you play with the recipe, you ruin it. You know how they say, if you have a good thing going, just let it go. So I've played with it and I find the best is don't touch the shell, but concentrate on your filling. And usually the flavoring bakes out anyways. So it's like, unless it's chocolate, there's no point. Okay, you guys, I'm going to do chocolate. And I don't want to do a huge batch of chocolate because it's just too much. So I'm going to do some math and I'll be back to do a chocolate one. And now I'm back and we're going to do our chocolate. So you will basically need, I will put the recipe in the description, good quality cocoa powder. So um, I get mine at Costco. It comes in like a bag and I love it. Hershey's, uh, it's not my favorite. I've had issues with it. Like sometimes the macarons come out, sometimes they don't. So I don't recommend the Hershey's cocoa powder. You want like, what is that one brand? I forget the name of that one brand, but there is like this chocolate brand and they make good cocoa powder. You want it. It's pricey, but you definitely want to have good cocoa butter, cocoa powder. And I'm going to try to find a picture of what mine looks like, or at least try to link it of the one that I bought. Cause I don't have it. I just have it in the container. Okay. So chocolate macarons, 155 grams of my room temperature egg whites. So, and then 140 grams of sugar. Yes, the chocolate, the recipe is a little different. It took us, no joke, you guys, years to figure out this chocolate recipe. I just had the hardest time with it. And then I figured out it was the, co the cocoa powder is more of an issue than anything. So just make sure you have good quality cocoa powder. So we're going to put this on the mixing for four minutes. So we decided with when we divide our, half, our recipe in half, four minutes is key. So we're going to time it. While this is mixing, I'm going to do my dry ingredients. And then my dry ingredients is 180 grams of powder sugar, 70 grams of almond flour, and 30 grams of cocoa powder. I'm going to leave this on because I'm going to do another batch and separate it. So I'm going to do a full batch that we do at the tea room, but I'm going to separate it into um, two different colors. I preheated my oven to 300. We'll give it a try. Like I said, I haven't baked in the, in this oven, so we're going to have to play with it, but I did it at 300. And I think, so we do it at the tea room at 250. Obviously commercial oven, all that good stuff. So at home, I'm doing it at 300. I remember I baked, like, I don't have the recipe from home that I did many years ago, but I remember I baked it. It was like 300 or even 325. I'm going to try it at 300 and see what happens. Mixing technique is the same. And I timed it, like I said, over there and I did it for four minutes. So you can totally do it three to four minutes. Four, I think is a good number um, for this particular size batch. 
especially since if you're new and you're mixing slower, you're not going as fast as me, that all makes a difference. And I remember this was too loud for me. If you are rewashing um, your bowls for your next batter, I've done this so many times, you guys, that I can't even stress enough how much I've kicked myself in the butt for being for rushing and not being careful. When you're washing these bowls, water gets underneath here, and when you're pouring your batter, it will start dripping from here into your batter. <sighs> If you get one or two drops, okay, but anything else, it will screw it up. So just make sure your bowl is extra dry around here and around the handles. Okay, this is pretty mixed. You know, same thing, you guys. We're just kind of letting it plop down that's how we know it's ready <laughs> anytime i did the whole dribble thing or whatever they call it ribbon i overmixed it so for me the plopping down <laughs> works again we have our tip our bag, cut. Oven's ready. And macarons are almost ready. So just about, like these are not quite. These are, and these are. But you can tell, like you, I'm touching them. But they're just not quite. So just a few more minutes. Let's see. I thought I timed it. How long they've been drying? I want to say, no, that can't be right. Oh, okay, I did write it down. <laughs> so it's been a half an hour. Usually at the tea room, it goes quicker. Maybe in my house, it's just more, I don't know. Well, I didn't have the fan on going the right way because now they're drying super nice and super fast. But they need about five more minutes. So with my fan, I'm at 35 minutes, you guys. When I say they need time to dry, I mean they need time to dry. None of this 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm -mm. With my fan, it's about 35 minutes so without a fan you're looking at a good 45 minutes to an hour okay now here's what i will say some of you already might have done macarons multiple times and none of the stuff that i say you do and they come out perfect i'm happy i'm truly honestly happy you found a technique that works i'm only sharing with you what i do how i did it how I do my macarons. That's it. Is this 100% the only way and you need to switch? By no means. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just sharing with you guys our recipes, or I should say my recipe and how I did it. That's it. All right, we're gonna get all this into our bag. Um, this is a, I don't know the size of the mats, but I know I had to cut them. The baking sheet is almost like 
13 by 17, something like that. It's like weird something on there. Okay, same thing. Let it drop, let go, and pull. Drop, let go, and pull. These are ready to go in the oven. So they're very nice and dried. Perfect. Okay, be gentle. Don't hit anything with them. Um, don't tap them in any way. Like, just be super duper gentle with them. That's what you guys need to do. All right, let's get them in the oven. So I just got a text from my brother who's watching my daughter's dog. You guys have to see this. We're getting a lot of snow right now. And this is the text that I got. That's Miss Stella. That's my daughter's dog. And she is a trip. This dog is so funny. And her hairdo, my daughter Julia does this. She's a groomer. And it fits her. This this dog is, whoop, my fan almost went. This dog is so funny. So I had to share that with you. All right. She's so funny. Okay, done with, with that. Let's get back to, I don't like my fan the way it's crooked. It's driving me insane. So I'm going to straighten it out. Okay. All right, so I'm doing a full batch, which I will link the recipe for that full batch as well on the bottom. I'm doing full batch, and I'm going to divide it into two different flavors, two different colors, really. So it's on my way. So the coloring that I recommend and I use is gel. First of all, first and foremost, gel has to be gel. I've done powder. You could use powder. I just feel like the powder is very hard to master and it's very expensive. So you have to use a lot to get deep colors and the powder stuff is very expensive. You can totally do that. And if that's what you do, awesome. But I use Chef Master. Okay. So our bottom ones, that's a timer for the bottom ones. Let's check those out. I use Chef Master. Okay, I believe we have a time. So 17 minutes for 300, bake at 300. I was just double checking them, make sure they don't have like a gray halo. If they have like a gray halo, it means they're undercooked, leave them in there. Maybe your oven's a little bit different than mine, but start 17 minutes seems to be a good number. They're not wiggling, they're not coming off. We're gonna let them dry completely and then go to the next step of filling. But 17 minutes, we got it. Uh, that's still good, all right. Your egg whites cannot sit. Once they're beat, you have like a minute or two to start incorporating your dry ingredients. So Master Chef, I will do my best to link a recipe in for them. Okay. Chocolate bakes at a higher temperature. So our chocolate's gonna go on the bottom. I'm gonna do it at 325. So again, larger portions, I mix for about five minutes. If you're slower, it takes you longer, add a little bit of more time for your mixing, um, the mixing the batter. That doesn't change unless you have a bad mixer, which I do at the tea room. But um, if you have a good mixer and it mixes at a good speed, that doesn't change. It's 
four minutes for the half batch, five minutes for the full batch. So I bake, I mix for five minutes. It might take you a little longer. It might take you six, maybe to seven minutes. I would highly recommend to time yourself so that you have good consistency with your macarons and they always come out the right way. But we want it to droop off like that. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm still thinking as I'm doing this, should I do two colors? Should I do three colors? Ooh. Oh, I got an idea. All right, we're going to do this as pistachio. So just a few drops or a big squirt of, what is this? Leaf green. You're still only folding. You never want to like psh, go to town. It's always just folding and then pressing. So fold, press. I have a neon green also color and I like the way that pistachio comes out better. This leaf green is not pistachio color to me. The neon green is. But this is what we have. So this is what we're going to use. Here's another thing though. If you don't have, if you're new to this, I wouldn't recommend dividing the batter right away because you got to move fast. So that's not going to work if you're new to this. So I would suggest to do one flavor, one color at a time. Okay, so I decided I'm going to do a stripe. So it's a nice technique that I can show you how I do it of red and green because right now when I'm doing this video, it's Christmas time. So you want to open up your bag, have it nice and open where you can see. So not crunched up. So we have red and then we have green. And I'm just going to layer a line of my red like that see and then my red is dripping that's okay come on green and green doesn't want to come out Oy. see my red's doing all this funky stuff which is fine you guys this is not don't throw this bag out and redo it I'm sure it'll come out great. So now my green did something I did not want it to do. <sighs> okay. We're just going to take the green and push it down. It came up in a big blob and I didn't want that. So we're just going to take it and that's what I did. Just kind of draw it in there. I don't want to put it down in there because it will close and then all the colors are just going to go boop. We don't want that. Okay. Now that I got some of it going down, now I can put it in there. The first, I got some in there. Um, the first like one squeeze I normally don't use. It just has too much coloring on it and it'll be weird. I like to sprinkle pistachios right on top of my pistachio macarons. And keep in mind, whenever you're putting anything on top, if it's sprinkles, if it's nuts, if it's cocoa powder 
you want to give it extra time to dry because that makes a difference. Checking. Oh, these are good. These are good to go in the oven. Perfect. Okay, let's do this. As you guys can tell, they came out fine. A few of these that have more of the coloring, they might crack. Mm, we'll see. That does happen. That's normal. But I'm piping them the same way. So we're just dropping, letting go, and swirl. And I think these are really cute. Christmassy. Now, if you don't like, excuse me, if you don't like the blended look, another thing I do is I will do two separate colors, put them in one bag and then pipe them. And then it's two completely separate colors. That looks really cool too. It is more steps and honestly, they get eaten the same way, but it's totally something that is something we did for our cotton candy and a few other flavors that we did. Loud noise. That's it, folks. <laughs> now they're going to dry and we just bake and go and bake and go and bake and go. Let's do some dishes. Our timer went off for our chocolate. So we bake them um, at 325 for 20 minutes and I'm sticking to it. That's a good time for a home oven. But what I wanted to show you guys so here we go look great perfect now when they're drying i should have churned them a little bit because look what happened some of these didn't dry right so they got ruined but it was only that one so i know it has to do with the drying oh all right we close these oven because the rest came out perfect that's the joy of macarons. You never know what you're going to get. I'm just kidding. Um, just make sure they're dry. I rushed. I didn't touch them. So that's what happened. So just double check, make sure that they're dry on all ends. Even if you want to, like right now I'm drying some, I'm actually going to turn them halfway. So for in, they're drying for half an hour. That's what I figured we're at. Ooh, we don't want to squish them. Um, they're drying for half an hour and I'm going to as I'm on my knees here praying for my macarons. We pray for our macarons. That's what we do. Um, I'm going to churn them. So 15 minutes, I'm going to churn the, the macarons and then continue to, or move the fan or whatever. Just make sure that they're drying evenly. And the other thing, me and my husband were talking about it. Uh, oven is new. We just got it, but it was never leveled. So I, I almost feel like it's kind of tilting this way. So I'm going to have him level it. I think that makes it a, so make sure your oven is level. It makes a difference because I'm confused on even my white shells and I know they were dry. So I think it has something to do with the ovens, but overall, as you guys can tell, they came out perfect. A few missed ones. So a few little kinks I have to work out, but if you follow all the tips of drying, mixing, um, all that other good stuff, it will work. It's just, I got to figure out what's going on with my oven. Okay. On to the next ones. They're going to dry. We're going to throw them in, pop them out, and then we'll be done. And then I will post a video on my creams in the description. So in the description, there is going to be a link to the video for my fillings. I only do one type of filling and that's it. And they're the best. Everybody loves them. And that's what I do. Okay. So these have been cooling off for about a half an hour, but I just wanted to show you guys. Ta-da! Perfect shells. You can fill them 
like I'm trying to feel them. Okay. So they're pretty room temperature. They're fine. You can fill them now and then eat them. But if they're going to sit for more than a few days, which they totally can, you go ahead and fill them and then eat them the next day because they will get hard when they're sitting. Right now, they're, the inside is still soft. As you can tell, I'm, I'm pushing down. See, it's still soft. But once they sit, it will get hard. With my cream, with my filling, it's okay. You just have to wait a little bit. So the macarons are drying, they're doing their thing, but I wanted to show you in the meanwhile, my technique for creme brulee macarons. Um, this is our creme brulee syrup that we use in our filling recipe will be below but to get that creme brulee look on top i find this to be like the easiest and you can do it ahead of time so if you're doing like 300 like we do uh done 300 macarons creme brulee it's just super easy to do it this way so and it gives a good flavor that's what i like about it too we're gonna take some of this syrup this syrup is so thick, it's hard to get it out. It's so good. You need sugar, a torch, and the syrup. So I have um, some macarons here. There we go. We just baked these today. We're going to put our, so, <laughs> it's blowing because it's drying them. So we're just going to put the syrup right on the shell like this. And then I dip it in my sugar, just regular granulated sugar, nothing fancy. I need a sheet. You don't want to do this directly. Boy. We're going to put this on like that. We're going to sprinkle some sugar on top as well. And I hope this is going to work because of all the air from my fan, but Turn it down too low, and you're basically just going to torch your macaron just like that. Go slow, have your temperature on low. <sighs> Woo. Spreading it on there. Dipping it in our sugar. Sprinkle some sugar on top as well. And then torch it. I should shut off the fan. I'm going to shut off the fan for like a minute so I can do this video. Okay. So you want to have your flame on low and just go super slow. This, the, the syrup gives it such good taste. And then you have your creme brulee effect by doing this with it. So I just think this is like the best way to do it. This is how we've always done it. And it works amazing. There you go. So you got your creme brulee macaron. And then you just put your filling in there and then on top they go and they're, they're so yummy and so good the good thing is about this like i said we normally did this like the day before before we filled it even so we would bake it do the creme brulee part and then we can just fill them as we go so the day before or the day of whatever but the bottom line is you can do this ahead of time so that is our little technique for creme brulee macarons there you go And then I also wanted to show you how I paint our unicorns. So normally unicorns get a little sprinkle here as well before I put them in the oven, but I forgot the sprinkles at home. 
but I'm sure this is fine. We're just going to gently pull it off. And then we have edible markers. Oh, as soon as I can get this off. There we go. And I draw, actually, I like the side better. We'll draw my little eyes, lashes, eyelashes. And then I have edible powder for the blush and then edible paint for my ears and my horn part. Okay, so we got our eyelashes on. This is what I use for my ears and the top part. And then I use this for the blush. And of course, edible gold, sprinkles. Well, they're not sprinkles. All right. There's, you can tell we just did a whole bunch. So I'll just do like a small amount for the ears. And then... I'll do the whole top. And usually, like I said, there's sprinkles there and it makes a difference. I think if you do the, do them with sprinkles, it'll be cuter. Okay. And then I just do the top part with the edible gold. My ears, I don't do them. Shake off the excess. And of course, got to give them blush. That's it. So we're finishing up. We're about done. I have the last three in the oven and that's it. So you guys, here are the pistachio ones that we worked on. Oh no, I took them off. They're still warm. I just took it off. Don't do that. Don't take them off right away. Let them cool off. Um, but that's it. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, to play the, the, another thing I would recommend is everybody's ovens are different. Mine might bake at one temperature. It might bake at another. I have to play with this oven a little more. This is my first bake um in this oven since i purchased it and something is off with my top one and i also feel like the oven is not leveled enough so same thing with you if it doesn't come out that doesn't mean you did something wrong it could be the oven or it could be you know you missed a step or something went wrong they come out great so thank you for being here i hope you guys enjoyed this recipe again if you haven't subscribed please do so in the description a lot of the recipes are there filling recipes there the filling video will be there so it all be there well thanks again for being here till next time have a blessed day